New mic, who dis? All right, so first drum hack. This one is pretty crazy, but if you subscribe to my channel, you can find even more drum hacks. That's a, a pretty good drum hack if you ask me. Okay, but for real, this first hack comes from Dom Lombardi, the founder of DW, the founder of DW Drums. Don't sue me. DW floor toms resonate, all floor toms resonate. If you're in the studio and for some reason you want to get a little bit of that out, you would probably first go to putting a little bit of tape. True. Which will give John close to a heart attack. I'm going to take one of the legs, turn him upside down, so it goes straight into the floor. As Quibus would say, this is viral gold. Quibus, I hope you're right. Sounds kind of dead. If you turn two of them, it'll ground it out more. If you turn three of them, it'll ground it out even more. Here it is with the floor tom leg in. Pretty resonant. Floor tom leg upside down. That was a sick stick flip. When I was at Drumio, we did a video on 25 different drum hacks and I forget who it was, but someone asked if I had ever heard of this trick before and honestly I never had, but it stuck with me ever since and I still haven't tried it. So let's see, <laughs> let's see if this actually works. We got a floor tom and I tuned it to be pretty resonant. Yeah, it, it's still going. Very resonant. So now let's flip one of these legs. Yeah, it definitely shortened up a bit, but it's more on the tail end of things. So in the context of like a full drum mix, you probably wouldn't notice too much, but by itself, you definitely can. Now, let's flip another leg. Yeah, so it's definitely shortening up even more with two of the legs flipped. And while it is shortening up the sustain, it sounds a little bit choked, so I'm kind of scared to try the third leg. Yeah, it's definitely less sustainy than before, but at the same time, it sounds kind of choked. This definitely does work. I don't know if it's something I'll be using all the time, but it is a good trick to keep in your mental toolbox for the next time you really do need to cut the sustain of your floor time. And it's actually kind of funny because all these drum companies engineer these tom mounts and floor tom legs to, you know, have the most amount of sustain possible, but then people just put like 18 moon gels on the drum. Drop a comment if you want to see me make a giant moon gel like that. That one's photoshopped. Next up, we have the Simon Phillips paint can in the kick drum trick. So what I do is there's another little technique. I take a paint can. What that does, it's just mass. So when he hits that, that paint can, it sounds like it's filled with sand. Um, and spoiler, he doesn't say anything about it in the video. He just says he puts a paint can in there, but let's listen again. At first, I thought it was the handle of the can shaking around, but this can doesn't have a handle on it, so it probably is full of sand. I just did like eight seconds of research and found another video where he talks about it and they are filled with sand. Inside that paint can, it's full of sand. It, again, microphone friendly. It makes a very complex sound with a lot of low end floating around. Who knew a paint can could sound so complex and add low end to your bass drum? It tightens up that low end and makes it easier for this boy to, to understand. So in this clip, he has the rezzo head off, but then he plays it with it back on. So for the sake of my testing, I'm gonna have the bass drum head off or off. This is a bonus hack, I guess, but if you wanna use a bass drum without the rezzo head, what you can do is take the head and cut out like 90% of it so there's just a small ring going around it. That way you can put it back on the drum. And by doing that, the lug inserts won't rattle around. Also, you don't have a bunch of loose hardware to keep track of. And the reason I'm using no rezzo head is so I can place the paint can and remove it without having to take off the head and then worry about tuning it the same, but also I can keep the mic in the exact same spot. 
So right now I have a few pieces of foam that I'll be placing the paint can on, but also there is a felt strip going across the batter head, so let's see how it sounds right now. Now let's carefully place the paint can inside the drum and see how it changes. Putting stuff inside of your bass drum is by no means a foreign concept to drummers. I'm sure everyone's put a pillow in their bass drum at some point, but I would argue that's more muffling, while this is more like diffusion and absorption, I, I guess. I don't even know what's going on with this. Of course, some of the frequencies bounce off of the can while others get absorbed, but whatever the case is, it definitely works. Now, this isn't the most practical thing because you have to carry around a 12 pound thing of sand, but in a studio situation, this is definitely worth trying out. Number three. We have a simple yet effective fix for a bass drum hoop protector. This one comes from Sounds Like a Drum and is from a longer video where they talk about some other drum hacks, so I'll link to it down below. There's lots of brands for this kind of thing and you can go that route. I chose today to go with my current favorite, which is a 3M product and it's basically for um, non-slick around swimming pools. They also make it for um, like regular steps and things like that, but the swimming pool one is particularly nice because it doesn't actually have any grit in it. It's more of like a scratchy resin, but there's no paper on the bottom to tear or anything like that. And it's a little bit thicker, so you can kind of dial in the pressure onto it a little bit harder and not worry about it either sliding off or getting into your hoop at all. Recently, I've been cutting up a bunch of drum wrap scraps and then using double stick tape and making my own hoop protectors with that. The wrap material is pretty slick, especially compared to this 3M safety walk stuff, so I bought a roll, let's cut it up and see if it works. This is the Bass Drum Hoop Protector Grip Tester 9000. The 8000, it didn't survive. These two strips of wood will emulate the bass drum hoops. They will get clamped onto the pedal like so. Then I can place these weights on the end and we can test which one holds better. So I'm gonna tighten this up until it touches and then give it one, two, three, four and a half twists. So first up we have the wrap scrap with double stick tape. Here is five pounds on the very end. So far, so good. We'll take another five and put it on the end. And we're losing grip. And yeah, 3M safety lock. One, two, three, four and a half. Five pounds. Oh yeah, holds it like it's nothing. Go to 10. Eh? Uh, eh? Uh. So ignore that last test. I'm just gonna crank this down until I can't crank it anymore. Five pounds. Ten pounds. All right, it's holding it. Here's 15 pounds. And we have a failure in the hoop. The wrap scrap. Five pounds, 10 pounds. So once again, the bass drum hoop failed in the exact same spot. When it comes to protecting a hoop, I feel like either of these will do just fine. But even though my testing wasn't really the most scientific, I still feel like the 3M stuff is a lot more grippy because it has more tooth to it. There's a lot more texture while the wrap is flat and slick. I still think the wrap looks cooler and you can get it to match your kit. But ultimately, the 3M stuff is a lot cheaper, it's a lot easier to find, and also it's just a lot easier to use because you don't have to like put it together, you just cut it up and then slap it on the kick. So because of that, this is going on to this bass drum. Moving on, we're talking about this wooden bass drum beater. Hey, that's me. So you can see here, it's of course a wooden beater. Sorry, uh, what are we talking about? Is this a wooden, wooden beater you're using? It has a flat face to it, but sometimes you don't want the wooden sound, okay? So what you can do is take a furniture felt pad. Of course, you put this on the bottom of a desk, table, chair leg, whatever. Just peel off the tape and slap it on the face of the beater. Press it down, and now you have 
a soft feeder. Is your wood too hard? Just soften it up a little bit. So this is something I haven't talked about on my channel before, which is why I included it, but this is like the easiest and simplest way to turn a hard beater into a soft beater. I do have a wooden beater, but I don't have any felt pads, and I think I know the perfect place to go find one. I am very upset because they didn't have any. The last time I bought some of those felt things, I went to the exact same Dollar Tree, but that was like three years ago. So I guess, you know, inflation and all that. But I'm kind of bummed because you all keep saying to bring back the Dollar Tree series. And uh, this was the perfect time, but they let me down. Using a low and slappy bass drum tuning probably wasn't the best idea for this because they kind of sound similar. You definitely can hear a difference, but it's, it's very subtle. A better demonstration would probably be with a smaller, higher pitch bass drum. All right, this last one comes from Instagram, and for some reason it's not working on my laptop, but this is from Driven to Drum, and actually I talk about this in my very first testing drum hacks video I did in 2015. But this clip got shared around and reposted a bunch, and a bunch of people DM me saying I should test this out, so I figured we could give it another go. Listen to that tone. So he's taking a heat gun to this very, very, very dented up head and the dents are just not melting away, but they're going away. Words are hard sometimes. Let's see how it sounds now. So I don't have a drum head that's that dented up, so let's fix that. Or I guess let's break that so we can then fix that. Yeah, I would say that sounds kind of bad. But through the magic of the heat gun, we should be able to bring this head back to life. that it actually worked the real test is how does it sound the head is completely cooled off and i have not touched the tuning one bit i would say that worked pretty well this shouldn't be something you have to do too often hopefully i've done this trick a handful of times but it's mainly on bass drums where i don't have an impact patch and the beater really dents up the head and if you're like me and buy and sell a bunch of used drums then you know that sometimes changing out the heads isn't really worth it so having a heat gun as well as a magic erase marker will go a long way in bringing back the heads so the theme for this episode is subtlety all of the sound related hacks made very minor changes but sometimes that's all you need now i've never played in a situation where i've needed that level of precision of sound eh we'll fix it in post but that day might come and these are all good tricks to have on standby 